Hey there, and welcome to Crochet Therapy. I'm Barbara, your host for this episode of Morning Coffee and Crochet, and today we are going to talk about warm weather crochet makes. So, I know that for some of you, I'm going to pull you a little bit closer, for some of you, the, um, oh, it looks so redneck. <laughs> Let me do this. There we go. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh my gosh. Hi, Alice. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Jay. It's good to see everyone. Let's see who else might be here. Um, Robin, hello. Good morning. And um, let's see. That's about as far back as I can go. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, I don't know why I came out here this morning, <laughs> except that I needed some, well, I thought I needed some sun, but there's no sun out here this morning. There are a lot of trucks. Oh my goodness. So, I am so glad to see you this morning. Um, and for those of you just coming in, hello and good morning. Hello and good morning. And I hope that you're having a great day. Uh, so far, it's early here. Um, oh my gosh, now we have <laughs> a little plane. <laughs> uh, oh, a pins are stapler. <laughs> Jessica, you're funny. Uh, you're funny. Are you going to staple it and leave it there forever? <laughs> mm. Oh my. My coffee is cold, cold, cold. So how is everyone this morning? It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. I'm going to move you a little bit closer. You might. <laughs> I'm with Alice on this one. Definitely pins. <laughs> Definitely pins. Yeah. We don't want... Um, you don't want your your beautiful work to get uh, stuck on whatever you're blocking with. I hope it doesn't start raining. It almost looks like it's going to rain. <laughs> good morning, Valerie. It's good to see you. Good to see you. So what's in everybody's cup? I, right now, just poured a really quick cup of coffee, and it's... Uh, I didn't make coffee. I just uh, grabbed mom's coffee and she does the Melita. So she pours it and it, um, it's nice and hot, but then it sits on the stove and, and gets cold. So guess what? I'm drinking cold coffee this morning. <laughs> I didn't take time to heat it up because I was running late as always. Oh my goodness. Well, it, it's coffee. It's just, hey, Awanda, good to see you. And Valerie, yes, we missed you. We missed you. Oh, my goodness. So this is our shed right here. And this is um, one of the things that uh, we're having to box up and clear out and get everything together. So things are collecting over there. <laughs> oh. Well, I hope that everyone is having a great Monday morning. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. Um, yeah, so that's always good. Um, <laughs> oh, Jessica, what are you blocking that you have to use the wall? <laughs> Valerie's drinking a super large coffee. Good for you, Valerie. Good for you. I hope it's just the perfect temperature for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what's in everyone's uh, cup? What's on everyone's hook? I am curious. Did y'all crochet this weekend? I did not. <clears throat> I'm, um, I still love crochet, but I'm in a little bit of a slump of, um, crochet time. Um, trying to pack up boxes and just dealing with the normal, you know, every day to day life. Um, it's, you know, it's a little, 
Oh, Alice is having a big coffee too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that you would have it any other way. Oh, oh, it says to block before doing the sleeves. Wow. Boy, those instructions do like blocking, don't they? <laughs> I'm not a blocker. Um, call me lazy. I'm not a blocker. I do know that um, crochet makes look so pretty when they're blocked. Um, but I don't block. No. Nope. Like I said, call me lazy. I'm not a blocker. Yeah. So, does anybody still have snow? <laughs> yeah, that's why you don't have a setup, because you don't block. Yeah. I, I really, you know, if I, probably, if, if I were going to sell things, like, you know, clothing or whatever, I would probably block it, just because it, it does make it look more finished. Oh, Jessica had snow yesterday. Okay. Okay, so for you, this um, warm weather crochet mix might be a little premature. <laughs> oh, Alice is finally getting spring. No snow. Good. Good for you, Alice. Good for you. Finally getting spring. So, excuse me. Pardon me. Um, oh, um, Valerie says she's sitting at... The nursing home with a patient, crocheting four market bags. Good for you. Wow. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I have a list of my top 10 makes. I know. Stop that yawning. Alice says, my top 10 makes for warm weather. Okay. And these are in actually no particular order. <laughs> They're just 10 jumbled up things that I really think are great for um, warm weather. And there, there's a couple things on here that, um, that are new that I hadn't seen before. Oh, Alice is finishing up a dodo bird. Wow. Good for you. Whew. Goodness. Mm. Mm. Okay, maybe that will help. Maybe that will help. Get some coffee in my system. <sighs> Take a couple deep breaths. Get some oxygen in my system. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so number one on my list. And, oh, it's a free pattern from Hobie. I love those free patterns from Hobie. Sometimes I have to, um, sometimes the patterns are written just slightly different pardon me just slightly different and so I have to study it just a little bit but I can always get through them but sometimes they're written um, like I said just a little little tiny bit different um, okay so are we ready um, my top 10 makes for warm weather number one hanger covers Hanger covers. Now, I know uh, some of us have done hanger covers before, but I found a hanger cover pattern from the crochet crowd from Mikey that is adorable. It, um, and he crocheted them in different colors. Um, of course, you know, if you want to keep your um, closet all, you know, one color, choose a color. If you want to choose a neutral color or, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. But it was crocheted all along the whole three sides and then connected at the top. I live near a fire station. I don't know if you can hear the fire trucks or not. Um, and then on the very bottom, he did a scalloped edge and um, with a shell stitch. And it was super, super cute. I really liked it. Um, it was it was prettier than just crocheting along the three sides. Um, it was a little more elaborate. Um, the bottom shell stitch was super easy, and um, I think it was just you know 
um, you attach at the corner, you um, skip two, then seven double crochets, skip two, and slip stitch. Skip two, seven double crochets, slip two, skip, slip stitch. It was very easy. And um, I could see that, you know, working up pretty fast. And you could make these as a gift. But also for me, um, I have some dresses that are, um, you know, they're kind of that slippery material. And they, um, they have like um, just little little um they don't have sleeves on them they're sleeveless and sometimes on the plastic hangers they just slip off they slip off the the dress lands on the floor all the time the other option would be to get the the hangers with the little hooks on them the little indentation and then you can hook it in there but then you can't just pull that off the hanger you have to actually pick the hanger up and take the dress off i know i know it sounds like you know a really big problem right but with this, um, you wouldn't have to do that, and it would be just really cute. So I kind of fell in love with hangers, crochet um, hangers last night when I was looking, um, when I found that. That was like, oh my gosh, look at that. So that's one of the things that you can do. Super easy, um, and it's not going to lay on you like a blanket or a sweater and make you hot um, while you're crocheting. You can actually crochet outside and um, enjoy, you know, whatever breeze you have, which right now I have a nice breeze. It's really kind of nice out. It's not sunny, but it's nice out. I think it's in the 60s. So that's number one. Number two, y'all are gonna laugh because you know, this is my go-to for summer, but number two, um, oh, Alice says, I make lots of hangers. I also get kids hangers and make them in pink or blue buy plastic girl or boy pins at the dollar store and attach to baby gifts. That is adorable. What a cute idea. It's practical and it's adorable. And it's, you know, it's like a little embellishment onto your baby gifts, right? I like it. I like it a lot. So, um, the other thing is, <laughs> number two, that's what I was I was laughing at number two dishcloths and I know I know last year was the summer of the dishcloth I made a million dishcloths and I was really happy about that the summer before too I think um, but dishcloths really are easy to to take with you because you just have a little ball of cotton yarn a hook and your little dishcloth and so you can even stick that down into your purse or in a little bag, a little tote bag. It doesn't have to, you know, you're not having to carry around this huge bag with your blanket and your yarn and all the accessories that go with it, right? It's really easy to carry those around. Yes, Alice, you knew I was going to say that because that really is, um, it has been in the past, my number one go-to for summer makes. They're quick. You feel um, a lot of satisfaction in getting them done. You know, I, that one summer I was making three or four a day and um, I was just pumping them out and it was good. It was a good thing. Um, it, you know, really kept my crochet mojo, my crojo going. It really did. Okay, so <laughs> she's making them on her moving trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. And so let's get to number three. Number three is also a small make. It's even smaller than a dishcloth. But these are kind of neat to give as a gift. And um, they're really practical. They really are. I, um, I really like using them, especially if I'm using a glass with ice. And if the glass perspires, then I definitely need one of these. And that would be a coaster. And they have so many different kinds of coasters. They have coasters that look like chicken. They have a coaster that looks like a donut. They have coasters that look like cactus, watermelon, lemons, oranges. They have ca um, coasters that look like kittens, little kitties, <clears throat> little dogs, bears, all kinds of coasters. And then of course they just have the fancy ones that don't 
resemble anything in particular, but they're really pretty. Um, I would include in that mug rugs, um, you know, for your coffee mug. Um, that's kind of nice too. If you're drinking a hot cup of coffee and you're putting it on a wooden table, you're going to get the, um, you know, you're going to get the, um, the condensation under your mug. You are. So anyway, that was number three. Yes, number three. So let me do this really quick. There we go. Okay. And so number four for the warm weather makes would be, dun da 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 popsicle covers. And that would be for the popsicle sleeves, the plastic sleeves that have the liquid in there. You stick them in your freezer and then become, um, they become, you know, a popsicle. And when kids hold them, they get cold on their hands. When adults hold them, they get cold on their hands. And I found a couple really cute ones. Um, there was one that um, looked like the handle on a lightsaber. So you have the lightsaber handle, you put the, the colorful popsicle in there, and so then you have a colorful lightsaber. Saber. <laughs> I can't talk. Yes, the freezies. And so, anyway, before the kids open them, they can, you know, have a little lightsaber game, and then they can eat their, their popsicle, their lightsaber popsicle. There are others that are really cute, uh, different animals, different um, styles. It doesn't have to be just a plain looking, um, right, popsicle cover. Um, the lightsaber was really cute, Alice. I really like that. I think that that would really, um, that might sell over the summer, you know, especially for the moms with the little kids and if they like playing with lightsabers or whatever. That really, um, that really is what made me put that on this list because it was really cute, really cute. So, and if you have grandchildren, oh yeah, make one for all of your grandchildren. Um, you know, and even if you don't have kids, but, you have, but you're, you have neighbors who have kids or you have family members who have children, and if they occasionally come to visit you, if you have those stashed in your cupboard, and then when the child comes over, you know, if, if they want a little dessert or a little refreshing because it's hot, um, you can give them one of those and then they can take it home with them. You can make another for your cupboard and then they can take it home. And then they remember, oh, remember the time I went to, you know, Miss Anna's house and um, she gave me a popsicle and she gave me the, the freezy to hold, to hold the popsicle and she let me take it home. And um, kids remember those things, and it's just the little gestures that make kids really enjoy being around us adults, you know. And we can be kind of boring sometimes. We can be boring a lot of times. <laughs> to children anyway, right? <laughs> okay. We are halfway there. We are on number five. And number five, I've talked about these before, but I think it deserved to be on this list. Um, number five is the crochet water balloons. And um, the crochet water balloons are super easy to make. Um, it's a simple pattern. You make them with Bernat blanket yarn. So it's the really fuzzy, really thick blanket yarn. And you, um, so you make your water balloons in all different colors. And then in your yard or in your driveway or on your patio, um, Oh, you haven't seen one of those. Um, or on your patio, you set a bucket of water and you put the water balloons in there and let them soak up the water and then the kids can throw them at each other. <laughs> it's a cool way for them to get wet. It's reusable. They're having fun throwing things at each other that will not hurt them. And um, you're probably gonna get one thrown at you too <laughs> in all the fun. And um, so they are a lot of fun. Then all they have to do is put them back in the water bucket and or pail or whatever it is that you have and um, wet them up again and then throw them again. There's no having to blow up balloons or put more water in balloons. There's no picking up 
of the the little um, latex, you know, pieces of um, balloon, which you know, if if a bird grabs it or whatever, it could really be dangerous for our wildlife. So this is it's a conservative way. And um, ah, yes, are you allergic to balloons? Then definitely, that's what you need to make, Jessica. And um, so they're just really fun, really fun. And it's a nice little gift. So if you have children in your lives that, um, that you know, you want to gift, or if, you know, you have children that come over and they need an activity while the adults talk and um, do boring things, according to the kids, then give them the water balloons. It's hours and hours of fun because they can just keep reloading those balloons. And yeah, it's fun. So um, I want to let you know that the, um, the items that are unusual, like the lightsaber, I will put a link to those down below. And, oh, look at this. Let me see if you can see. See that? <laughs> that lizard? <laughs> Did you see the lizard? I saw him out of the corner of my eye, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let me tell you, I am on this snake group on Facebook, and it's a snake identification group. It's not because I like snakes. I don't like snakes. But the snake identification group, um, it's a great thing to belong to because if you find a snake, you know, in your yard, you snap a picture, you load it, and you tell them where you are, and then they will come back usually within a few minutes and tell you whether it's venomous or not and the species. Hey, Nikki, good morning. And, um, They'll tell you what it is, and they'll tell you whether to stay away from it. And um, so that's good. Well, I have been looking at these snakes online with cat eyes. Good to know. But I hope that I don't get close enough to the snake <laughs> to find out if they have cat eyes, right? That's what I'm hoping anyway. And so anyway, I'm on the site, and every time, without fail, here comes a snake, and I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, I'm trying to teach myself, right? Right? Good, bad, good, bad, venomous, friendly. You know, I, I'm just trying to teach myself. Without fail, I always choose the wrong one. And there's a 50-50 chance that I'm right. <laughs> My track record is not good. The tail and their eyes. Okay. Well, that's what I'm, I'm having trouble with. And um, so anyway, when I saw that lizard on the wall, like, because I've been looking at these snake pictures for so much, I was like, oh, no, a snake. <laughs> so anyway, that's a little backstory. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to keep, um, I'm just trying to make sure that if I do see a snake on the property in Tennessee, that I will know whether I need to run or not. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably am going to run anyway <laughs> and scream <laughs> and never want to go back there again. <laughs> but I, I really have to be brave, right? I have to be brave and I have to learn to deal with things like that. So anyway, that's just a story. Sorry that I, that I went off the deep end there with that story. So I did want to tell you that I will put links down below. Like, so for the lightsaber... Um, popsicle cover, the freezy. I'll put the link down below for that. Um, for some of the coasters that I found that were really cute, that were unusual, I'll put the link down for those. Um, and the hanger covers from the crochet crowd. I'll put that down too. Um, I actually, I think it was like a combination yarn inspiration and crochet crowd. So I'll put that down there. Now this next one, I definitely will put the, um, that's right, Jessica. Snakes are good because they will keep the moles and the mice out of the yard. Um, so, good snakes are good. Bad snakes, I don't want. And um, Okay, so this next one is really, really cute. And what a cute idea. Um, it is a mesh seashell collecting bag. So, it is a crochet mesh seashell collecting bag and so this has um, squares in it it's mesh 
but it's symmetrical. It looks really pretty. It's like little squares. <clears throat> it's almost like a little drawstring bag that you could put, put over your wrist while you're walking on the beach. And you know, a lot of us do go to the beach for the summer. And what a cute idea to have one of these. Um, give them to, um, you know, whoever is with you. Um, if you go, you know, as a family group and, you know, with several different family members and if they have children, definitely have some for them. Um, and then as they are, you know, spending the weekend or the week at the beach, they can put shells, seashells in this collecting bag. It's just a really cute idea. The mesh is, um, is a, it's a little bit big. So little tiny shells won't, probably won't stay in. But the, the small shells and medium shells will fit in it fine. If you get a really large shell, well, good for you. I don't think that would fit. <laughs> so you might have to carry that one. But anyway, it was just really cute. I really like the design of it. They had made it in a purple color. It was really um, bright and sunshiny looking and um, summery looking. And I just really, I thought, wow, I had never thought of that before. So I'll put the link below. It's, a, it's definitely a make for the summer, definitely. The next thing on the list, and we have four things on the list left. Are you ready? So the next thing on the list would be pillows. Who doesn't love a good pillow? I love pillows. I like putting pillows on my bed. I like putting pillows on my sofa. I love pillows. I like having a pillow to bolster my back sometimes because you know, some, some sofas, some chairs are just not comfortable. They like, you feel like you're laying back. I don't like to lay back. I like to sit up straight. I'm one of those who want to sit forward a little bit, right? And so I do like having a pillow, but not just for the bolstering effect, but, um, but also for, um, you know, for the decorativeness of it. Here's the thing too, you can start making Christmassy pillows in the summer. You don't have to wait until it gets cold to make a Christmas pillow. And last year I made a Christmas pillow and it was so pretty. It was so pretty. It, um, it had a, a snowflake design on it. And it had little pom-poms on it that was the same color as the snowflake. It was just a really, really pretty um, pillow. I also, as I was looking, I found a pillow that was called Americana. And um, so for um, those in the United States... Um, you know, if you like the blue background, the royal blue background with some stars on it, and it was kind of in a circle, like reminiscent of the, the original, you know, Betsy Ross um, flag. So it was blue, and then it had the stars that went kind of in a, in a little circle at one of the corners. And then the other one was red and white stripe, and you just kind of put those together, put the red and white behind the, you know, the blue with the stars. It kind of just gave a 4th of July kind of vibe, a summery vibe, a um, patriotic vibe. And so anyway, that was really cute. There are so many pillows out there with so many stitches that, you know, some of them are very retro looking. Um, do you remember the pillows back in the day that were the, um, they were the flat circle, but then it, it was kind of like a, um, a disc right? And those pillows and um, you know what? You don't have to make them in retro colors. Make them in your colors to go with your decor. Um, but it's always nice to have something like that. Um, here I am. I'm sitting on the deck and I'm sitting in a, a metal chair. Um, long gone are the uh, comfy cushions that came with this set. We've had this set for 17 years. And we still have one, two, three, four, five, five out of the six chairs um, we still have. So it's a good investment. Um, but we don't have the cushions anymore. So if you're sitting on the deck, if you're sitting on your porch, if you're sitting on your balcony, 
um, and you just need something to just soften, soften your back a little bit, make some pillows. You can never go wrong with that. Um, and they're always well received because who wouldn't love to get a pillow? I would love to get a pillow. Sometimes they're expensive in the stores, right? And so to have somebody give you a pillow, that's a big thing. All right, enough about pillows. <laughs> All right, we have three left in this list of my top 10 things to make. Um, now this one, um, a couple years ago, the bucket hats were really in, right? The summer bucket hat was really in. Now, this season, it seems to be the beach hat with the floppy, um, you know, brim seems to be the in hat for the summer. And you could make these hats in any color um, to match your summery outfits. Um, you could make, you could even make them, um, you know, in a red, white, and blue um, to, you know, be patriotic. You could make them in a neutral to make them reflective of the sun, and that way you can wear it with anything. You could make it in a neon color to match your favorite bathing suit, whatever you want to do. Anyway, these, um, these hats are super cute. Some of them, the brims are floppier than others, and I do have some links for those. And um, they were just, they looked really, really fun. They looked really, really fun. And um, so number eight on the list is, dun dun dun, dun Amagurumi. Hey, Handmaid, it's good to see you. And so number nine on the list is Amagurumi because who doesn't like to receive a little stuffed toy? I mean, even if it's this big, it's cute. It can sit on your desk. It's adorable. Everybody wants one. And so there you go. You just um, don't be intimidated by amigurumi. If you've never made amigurumi before, um, start with something simple. And yes, it is intimidating at first. I remember following along to the tutorials. I actually, you know, followed a tutorial and watched her make it. And um, it turned out okay. It turned out okay. Trying to find the, um, the perfect way to sew the pieces together was the tricky part for me. But I finally did. I found a way to sew the, the parts together that really made it sturdy. It made it um, simple and not so stressful. Um, the person that I followed the most that gave me the best information about Amigurumi was actually Jada in Stitches. Um, so she has a lot of um, chibis. They're little tiny um, things, you know, some of them were, um, I remember one year I made a Frankenstein. I made um, all different kinds of little chibis. Um, I think I followed her pattern for um, a little mouse and um, just different things. So watching her really helped me. Um, she gave some really good tips, you know, because you want to go make sure that your hook size is small enough so that you're not getting those big gaps. I remember, um, oh, you find using florist pins, longer pins than normal help? Yes. Yes, I would think so. I would definitely think so. Did you hear that bird? <laughs> oh my goodness. So, um, yeah, I, I would think so too. And see, here's me. I'm like, I don't want to use pins, you know? And I was like, rebel, rebel, rebel. And um, so, yeah, finding the best way to put your amigurumi together is, um, you know, is a trial and error type thing. Now, I did make a couple pieces that I used too big of a hook on. Um, and I, I found that mostly, like I made the, um, I made a, um, a monkey. And of course it was a, a brown. And I stuffed it with white. 
um, white stuffing, you know. That's all I could find. And so the white showed through. <clears throat> and I know now, you know, there are different things that you could do. There are different ways that you could do it. But the bottom line is I used too big of a hook when I made that um, monkey. And so it allowed little tiny holes between the stitches to show through. So that was the basic mistake that I made. Um, always make sure that you use a small enough hook so that you don't get those glaring gaps in your amigurumi. Yeah. So anyway, amigurumi is great. I love making things because they're so cute. They're so cute. And who doesn't love making, you know, I think the last thing that I made was that little, um, it was that little, um, was it a snow boy? I don't remember. Anyway, he had a little hat. It was a Christmassy thing, and he had a little scarf around his neck. I can't remember what he was called. But anyway, that's what I made, the last one that I made. And I had fun doing it. The one before that was Sassafras, my goat. And that one was just, like, my favorite thing to make at the moment. Um, I was so proud of that because I had never made one with that many intricacies. Oh, yes, that's right. I did my cactus. That's right. It was um, it was a little cactus that I did, and um, with a little pot. That's right. That was my own design, and um, I forgot about that. That was um, with the Southern Crocheters live, and that was during our Green Week in March, and um, so we we actually you know crocheted one together. That was fun. That was fun. So the last thing on the list for summer. And, you know, I love these. And this is a basket. So baskets you can make any size for any purpose. And there are so many patterns out there for some really cute baskets. Um, I know I, I made a fiber flux basket um, two years ago for Christmas. And it was really cute. It was really cute. It had a fold over and then it had a little, it was like a maroon, and it had, I made a little scallop on it in white. It just was really pretty. And then you can put some ornaments in it or whatever. So there are baskets that you can make for any purpose. And let's not forget about using fabric as our yarn in order to make a basket. And I have a tutorial on my channel for actually using fabric to make a basket. Um, I have a couple of them, and I just love them. They uh, uh, hold up a lot better than, um, that's a good idea too. Um, they hold up a lot better than um, a lot of the, um, a lot of the yarn ones, right? Now, um, a couple of you, as I was talking, you had some really good ideas. Jessica said, a sun umbrella would be really cool. It really would. A sun umbrella would be really cool to crochet. I'm not sure I have the patience to do something like that because I think a sun umbrella, you have to use that really thin um, cotton yarn, you know, maybe a size two yarn um, or maybe a three. I don't know. But anyway, that sounds like a really cool idea. If you make one, Jessica, you'll need to... Um, You'll need to post photos of that because that sounds like a really neat idea. Um, Valerie said we could also make small Christmas stockings. And that is really good. That's a really good idea, Valerie, for summertime makes. Because you're, you're making them and they're really quick. They're really simple. It doesn't take a lot of yarn. Um, you would need, you know, a little pair of scissors because you're going to get through that really quick and you're going to need to cut your work. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're traveling, you can um, wait until you get to where you're going before you sew in your ends or if you want to stash a, a needle somewhere so that you don't lose it <laughs> so that you can sew in your ends while you're going. And, you know, when you said that, Valerie, that reminded me of all of the different little um the little Christmas ornaments that I like to make. Um, I really like the idea of only having 
crochet Christmas ornaments on at least one of your trees, right? You don't have to do that throughout your house, but you know, if you have just a little tree on a table, you could do that because it wouldn't take that many um, ornaments to fill it up. But you know, through the years, I've made different things. I've made little tiny donuts that are 3D and I've still got some of those, so I'm going to put a little a little um, loop in those and hang those on the tree. I made um, some little tiny um, ice cream cones. Those are cute. I want to hang those on the tree. Little Oreo cookies. I want to hang those on the tree. And um, just several little things that I have made that, you know, that I really like and I really enjoy. So... Those would be really good to stock up on in the summer, have a box that's labeled Christmas, and as you're done, just throw them in that box and not worry about it until Christmas. When Christmas comes around, you're going to start unpacking. You're going to be like, oh, I'm so glad I made these, right? Not only that, but when you're, when you're gifting Christmas gifts this year, you could even take one of those ornaments and attach it to the gift, and so, which is what I did last year. <laughs> Uh, the year before, I think, not last year. And so that is a really fun way to, you know, share crochet happiness and crochet joy. So this has been fun. Thank you for your ideas. Keep bring, giving me your ideas. I'm sorry if I missed any of them. Um, but as I got on a roll talking, I just, I just talked and talked. So anyway, it's been really fun hanging out with you. I hope that you have a really great week. Um, let this Monday just be the most fun Monday that you've ever had. Walk around singing your age, like I told you that story, right? And um, walk around singing your age and just appreciating life. Um, Valerie, you are such a blessing to so many people. And um, I hope that you um, have a peaceful day. And to all of you out there, Stay safe, be kind, and get hooking, and much love to everybody, and enjoy your coffee, and I will talk to you the next time we meet.